Scoring has never been a problem for the Philadelphia Wings. With the greatest hometown support in the league, they are the two-time defending champs. But there's a new tough guy in town. And this year, it's Detroit that is rewriting the offensive record books with the unique skills of identical twins, Paul and Gary Gate. Tonight, a collision of the league's top two powers. presents exclusive coverage of the major indoor lacrosse league. From the Spectrum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, it's the most exciting team of the 91 season, the Detroit Turbos taking on perennial power, Philadelphia. And all the excitement is around the Gate brothers, and this gentleman, Paul Gate, is all set to rewrite the single season goal scoring record. He comes in with 28 goals, and he will stand alone at the end of this game. As it was an important game for both teams, here is why. Detroit 4-1 lost last week. They must maintain that cushion above Pittsburgh. And look at Philadelphia. One game in the win column behind the tough team from Baltimore. They need this one in a big way. It's a very tough major indoor lacrosse league and it's going to be close all the way down to the wire. That's why this game is so very important. Hi, everybody. I'm Lee Felsmo along with Bill Barroza. Bill, we look at the visiting, uh, the visiting team from Detroit, the Turbos. What a sensational year they have had under the direction, under the skills of the twin Turbos. But they had a loss last week to New York. It was a surprise loss, but that may be one of their big assets coming into tonight. It is, Leaf. Uh, Detroit was up 8-1 to one in the first quarter, let uh, New York creep back into the game. And I'll tell you, it was a shock to Detroit, but that's a good good thing to happen because now, coming into this game, they'll, they'll realize that they have to play better, they have to play a full 60 minutes, and they are vulnerable to be beaten by any team in this league. Well, how about the, the roster? You've got Paul and Gary Gate. They can't do it alone. They proved that last week. You're right. Uh, they can count on Peter Park. They brought in a new scorer this week, uh, a guy named Brock, and uh, they're counting on him for a couple goals tonight. Now let's talk about the hometown Philadelphia Wings. There'll be 17,000 plus here at the Spectrum. They'll get a lot of support from them, but they need some scores, and their two top guns are walking wounded. One won't even be here, Brad Cotts. Yeah, I'll tell you, missing Brad tonight is a real loss for them, but they're gonna have to go and count on John Tucker, as well as some of the other scores that they have, Matt McGee and, and the whole staff of uh, the Philadelphia Wings. But I tell you, it's tough playing in the Spectrum. And I, I really uh, had trouble here when I played, and the crowd can make that big difference and be the, uh, be the seventh man out there on the field. Well, we'll see if that seventh man really takes in uh, the deciding factor for the Wings. They need this win desperately. They were shellacked when they played the same team in Detroit. Is it an important game for Paul Gate? Yes, it is. We talked about his potential tonight to break the single season record books. What's it mean to him? Let's take a look. Well, it, uh, it means a lot to me, but uh, not as much as uh, winning games and, and hopefully winning a championship. I mean, personal accolades have always been uh, secondary to, you know, a team atmosphere and winning as a team. So uh, it's important to me as an individual, but yet not as important as winning. A sensational team player, Paul Gate. He will lead that team against the Philadelphia Wings. We'll be back with the opening face-off in just one moment. Stay with us from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Tonight's game is brought to you by Coors Light. No slowing down with the Silver Bullet. By U.S. Air, America's most frequent flyer. By STX. Revolutionize your game with STX lacrosse equipment. And by Winless, the official warm-up of the major indoor lacrosse league. Before STX, lacrosse historically looked like this. Because of STX, lacrosse now looks like this. When it's your turn to make lacrosse history, do it with the original and best equipment in the game, STX. Major Indoor Lacrosse. It is the fastest game on two feet. Two teams squaring off face to face, putting players on the attack and bodies on the line. 
Nowhere is the engine so fierce, the drama so thrilling, or the emotion so high. Major Indoor Lacrosse, New England and Pittsburgh, next Monday night on Prime Network. Spectrum in Philadelphia. We are expecting a full house. That's around 17,000 fans that are very vocal for their defending champion Philadelphia Wings getting ready for the opening lineup. The Wings against the Turbos. The Turbos, the most exciting new entry. Or the, tur or the Turbos have the new guys. That's the Paul and Gary Gay combination. They are fabulous. And look, this is a look at how graphically they are making an impression on this league. Cots with most goals. That's a record that stands. Cots with total points. Tucker, most assists. They are all in Philadelphia. Paul and Gary Gate attacking all those offensive records. And I expect each and every one of those to be broken tonight in only their sixth game of this season. The starting lineups for Detroit. It'll be Paul Gate, Lay, Suckamore, a lot of veteran there. The lineup, uh, Paul Gate and Gary, Lemon. So Wiki in the goal. Philadelphia has Tucker Gabrielson, Manley, DeSico, and Resch. Eliuk starts there. Two Canadians in the goal. And when we talk about the goal, that is really a focal point for us, Bill Barroza. One of the things I remember from last week that will be a real feature of attention in this first quarter is how Ted Sawicki plays. He had a terrible game last week against New York. He's going to have to be sharp early on. New York shot from the outside, but I'll tell you, Philadelphia is going to have to get inside on Ted tonight. A lot of emotion in the spectrum. Detroit off to an 8-1 to lead last week. Were beaten soundly by New York. Nobody thought it would happen. Four and one now, and this division that they're in, the national division, can get very close if they lose against the Wings. Detroit here in purple, first quarter action. The Philadelphia Wings in gray playing tough defense as the Turbos get the first face off of this game. a little bit different than the first time these teams played. Detroit beat them soundly in Detroit. The two leaders showed you Cots and Tucker graphically. They are the leaders. Cots, Bill Groza, not even in uniform tonight. Now, Brad's a big loss for them, but I tell you, they'll, they'll go to Tucker. They've got some other scorers and Scott Gabrielson and Matt McGeady as well. The guy that is in uniform, a leader, John Tucker. He just came on the field, number two. There he is with the ball. Watch his left shoulder. Partially separated. A lot of pain. They didn't think he'd be here for this one. That's the guts that this player has. He's an American, all-American player from Johns Hopkins. He was on the world team this year when the United States beat Canada and Australia. And uh, he is a leader on this team. Now, Philadelphia bringing the ball down, looking for some offense. Denikin gets the ball in to Tucker, but the 42nd clock, the shot clock had expired. They lose possession. I'll tell you, Lee, one thing we're going to look out for tonight is uh, Philadelphia said they got to make sure they get back in the hole and play defense, and that's all they're concerned about. So you're going to see them just getting back on a shot by the Detroit Turbos. Sonali brings the ball down for Detroit as they set up their second offensive string. We're only about two minutes into the game. No score yet. Big game for Philadelphia. They are hurt. They are wounded. And, Bill, when you look at the numbers, they don't score anywhere near the amount of goals that Detroit scores. They're right there, about 55 goals behind. But again, they played one less game. Martin gets it in on the crease, and a shot missed by Mark Hahn. He was hit off the ball in that crease area by the Detroit defense. And once again, it's Sonelli who sets up for the Turbos. That's Terry Martinello. Terry's wearing number five this evening for Detroit. I was told that, and uh, that quickly escaped my mind. You're right, they took his name off the back. His jersey, they had a problem with it. So that's Terry Martinello, number five, instead of Sonelli. And it's Terry who's been in there since the opening whistle. His brother Ron on the same unit. This is a veteran unit. Terry now looking for a behind-the-back shot that tucks off the pipe. The follow-up saved again. I tell you, one thing you see early in this game is Philadelphia's going to try to run Detroit because they saw that uh, New York did that last week and did it successfully. Detroit, this is their third year in the league, and they have never been known, and of course, Bill Barroza, you played for this team last year, never been known as a fleet-footed team. Let's take a look at the goalies. Ted Sawicki had a terrible game last week by his own admission. He's a first-team All-Pro. He is one of the best in the league, the best last year. He had an off game last week. The other end of the field, it's going to be Eliuk. And Eliuk will be having the challenge of 
having the best game of his, he needs to have the best game in his life to keep oh. Philadelphia close. Well, we see a penalty coming up there, hit from behind by uh, Adam Mueller, and Detroit on their first man down. Let's see how they do. Another key to Philadelphia's success tonight, Bill, is them scoring on the power play. New York did it last week. Detroit is the most heavily penalized team in the league. You're going to get these chances. You've got to put the ball in the net. Leaf, Detroit has the top five penalty uh, uh, bad penalty boys. minute, bad boys, whatever you want to call it, in the league. So you get your chances to score on extra man, and you better take your shots and get the ball in the goal, especially Philadelphia, who probably has one of the weaker field offenses in the league. Another shot in on Sowick, and he looks tough early on. It's Jeff Goldberg using the protection of the crease. He comes out, and still five on four. A player down. That looks like Jack Sebastian from back here. Sebastian for Detroit. Goldberg goes over to see what's his status is. Take a break as Sebastian gets his wind back. No score. Jack Sebastian coming off the field for the Detroit Turbos. Took a heavy hit over there as the Turbos were playing man down. And now that gave them a chance to put some fresh legs in there. It'll still be five against four. But this is Gary Gate going against two players. He's seen this before. Very tough to corral, even with two players. And there's... Tony Resch coming in, a tremendous defensive player in the field game. Gary just trying to eat up the clock, use up the penalty. Now Paul comes in. This team is deadly, even a man down. And right now it's five players for Philadelphia against four for Detroit and Purple. Paul Gate now. That did it for Tony Gary. They come in with 38 points, or 28 points, or goals, that is, I guess, 38 for Paul. Help me out. I think it's 38 for Gary and 40 total for Paul. They're very, very close. And they lead the league in total points. What's the reason? That's right. Average. It's 40 and 38. And they average. That's an average of about eight points for each of these twins per game. All right. And the next and the next closest is Ricky Soul from Baltimore with uh, a little over five points per game. So they have a commanding edge over everybody. They carry a heavy load. I'll tell you, that was an opportunity for Philadelphia to get a breakaway and a two-on nothing there. But uh, again, the Gates did it. The ball, but he fielded. Uh, had to pick a stick back up and get it back. He did. Now it's a fast break coming down the other way. DeSico gets it over to the wing, and a shot by Martin is blocked at the last moment by Paul Gate. You know what impresses me, Leaf, is, is Gary and Paul do it all over the field. Paul made a great defensive play there, broke up that two on one, and, and that's what uh, helped Teddy Sawicki out, uh, preventing that goal. Gary Martin just tried to feed it into Delgatti on the other end of the field. Delgatti took his eye off it, trying to eye up the shot. Gave the ball back to the Turbos. No score yet. That would be a surprise. Five minutes into the contest. I'll tell you one thing that's evident, Leaf, is you can see Detroit getting back. They're intentionally uh, making sure that they get back and play good defense to, to help out their goalie. And, of course, they're thinking a lot differently than they did before last week's game against New York, they came in with a little bit of a swagger. They were 4-0, and they were up on New York 8-1 before New York started putting together a ferocious offensive attack. Now Detroit has a little bit of a crack in that veneer, a little bit of hesitation, possibly a little bit of lack of confidence. And every time a Philadelphia player takes a shot on the crease, Coach Mito Martinello said, I don't want anybody standing. You see them knocking them down. Mueller and Dan Pratt get the ball over to Sawicki, and he puts the ball up to Brock. Paul Brock from Western Ontario. So this is Paul Brock's first game with Detroit, and uh, he is a prolific scorer up in the Canadian League, so we should see some things from him tonight. Ron Martinello gives it to Terry Martinello, and Terry took a shot that was saved by Eliud. Push call, the ball go back to Detroit, and they're changing lines. I'll tell you, Dallas Elliott who was MVP a couple uh, weeks ago, and he's having another fine game tonight. Philadelphia keeping it very close. That's what they want to do. They want to keep this game well in hand. The Turbos have an explosive offense. They can make the game get out of hand very quickly. Loss of possession, but picked up by Conley. He loses it before McGady comes back and picks it up. McGady with the long hair flowing out of his helmet. Easy to find just for that reason. Deshiko now brings the ball in. John Tucker now, the captain of this team. He is the inspirational force. Going with the John Reese from Yale, Mike Tyson look, short socks that is. Now Deshiko takes it on the far wing. He's got the left hand lined up. Three players play defense against him. Well, still has the ball. And Andy Deshiko's leading scorer at Rutgers when he played there uh, just a year ago. 
the Seco brothers really helping to strengthen up the offense of that Philadelphia squad. It's hard to believe we haven't seen a goal yet, and we've seen seven minutes of play. Shot clock expires. Philadelphia trying to use every bit of that 40-second shot clock. They lose possession that time by not getting a shot on the four by four. You cannot just shoot the ball. You've got to hit the target. Ball comes into Gary Gate. He's tied up beautifully and closed by Denikin, Paul Denikin. And now it's Tony Resch. John Tucker still on the floor. Tucker taking his time. This is his trademark low. He comes up very accurate with the pass. Mark Hahn takes the shot and a nice save by Sawicki. I have seen Teddy make saves like that repeatedly over and over for the last three years. And I tell you, that is a tough save, but he just does it every game. My partner Bill Barroza retiring this year from this Detroit squad. He knows them inside and out. And he knows how much this team relied on Ted Sawicki last year and the year before to keep them in the game. Fast break opportunity for Philadelphia. This is Paul Denikin coming down one on one. Sycamore is in front of him. Now Mark Hahn takes the shot off the pipe. That would have been a goal, but the pipe saved it for Sawicki. Philadelphia putting on some good, consistent offense. Seven minutes left. We're about halfway through the first quarter. Still no score, and that is the surprise so far. We've got to say, to this point, Philadelphia is happy. Yeah, Philadelphia is very happy, but and I'll tell you, they, are, they have a deliberate offense lead. They are taking their time. They're trying to use all the time on the shot clock because, again, they don't want to get into a running battle with Detroit. Ricky Freed's on the field on the far side. That's Gary Martin from Penn State trying to get it. He loses the ball. Watch out. The galloping gate's coming down. This is Gary looking for the trailing player. Gary takes the shot, and that's the first score of the game. The great Gary Gate puts Detroit up by one. one nothing with 6.28 left. Well, Gary Gate in the open field is as dangerous as anybody. I'll tell you, that play started back on the defense. He picked up that ground ball, ran the whole floor, and just unbelievable shot. First faceoff was controlled by Detroit. Let's see what happens here. They again get the faceoff. And this is Pratt from Syracuse. Of course, the Gate brothers, seven times together, they reflectively, they were All-American players at Syracuse. Dan Pratt was an All-American defenseman there as well. Ron Martinello now, the coach's son, one of two on the team. What you notice, Leaf, out there in Detroit is they use a lot of moving picks and a lot of picking for the guy with the ball. Another hard shot in close. That's Adam Mueller from Michigan, and the pick is what set it up. You talked about it. He got a little bit of room and then really just bowled his way in for the shot. Yeah, he just drove, and I'll tell you, he's a, he's a pure lefty, and uh, didn't look like it was a great shot, but hit a corner. We see, the, we see the shot again, and I'll tell you, uh, that thing looked like it was going over the goal. Dallas Eliuk was a little bit surprised by that shot. So Eliuk, uh, wishing he had that one back, the one for Gary Gates, uh, you really can't fault him on that one, is one he'll save most often. Chris Flynn, who was very effective in the first meeting against these teams, not getting a faceoff yet. Detroit gets their third faceoff in the first quarter, and the Turbos now lead 2 to nothing, 5-40 left in the first quarter. Goldberg just dumps it back. Big Pete Park, the target he creates on the crease. Pete Park, as Goldberg takes one, Conley knocks the stick away, and it's launched into the crowd. Let's keep an eye on Pete Park, number nine. He's a huge target, six foot five. He scored three goals the last time these two teams met. He was one of the big reasons they got an early lead. Yeah, P Peter is a tough guy to stop. He's 222 pounds. And uh, at Philadelphia, one thing they're not doing is they're not matching up anybody player for player. Whoever's out on the floor is going to play one of the other uh, Detroit Turbos. Sweet Lou Delegati. He's got a great left-hand power move from that side. That's where he wants to work. But Detroit playing good defense. Dodrich there. Look at Pete Park. Good to stay with the quicker player, John Conley. Shot clock down to three, and finally they get it reset. Didn't get a great shot. They're really using that shot clock. You might guess by now that that is part of their strategy. Use the whole shot clock. The downside of that, Bill, is that they're not getting the good shot. They're forcing shots with five seconds left. You're right, Leaf. Uh, Dave Evans has to be pleased with the defense that the Wings are playing. But again, they're going to have to start moving the ball on offense. Lemon comes in, check from behind. Great defense by the Wings to take him away from the shot opportunity. 4.20 left, first quarter, Turbo's up by two. Up behind the back, shot by Gary Gate. And possession maintained. Suckamore now has it. He 
Bulls nursing an early leg injury. Looks to be healthy. Here comes Paul. Bulls his way right in. Left hand is shot. And no goal. It looked like uh, Dallas got a piece of that in the goal. There's that, there's that pick I'm talking about again. The turbo comes down low, picks for him. They just move off of it, and it's a it's a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. Well, the crowd start off very vocal, and they are starting to get a little bit frustrated by the three straight scores by the turbos. You saw him come off that pick. Dallas is going to have to play stand-up goal and not move as much as he has. So Paul Gate now moves into sole possession of the single-season record, 29 goals, a league record surpassing Brad Cotts of the Philadelphia squad, who is very visible by him not being here. He is an injured player, an injured leader on the Wings team. They are missing him tonight. 3-0, the Turbos. It was a long time before that first goal came about. It was about nine minutes of scoreless lacrosse. And in the last three minutes, they've ripped off three goals the Turbos have. Philadelphia, very patient on offense and maybe a little too patient. They've got to get some good motion. They like to use the whole shot clock, at least they have so far today, and have ended up forcing a few shots. Shot in close on Sawicki. The ball is saved. A follow-up. No goal in the crease is the call. A beautiful follow-up by Scott Gabrielson, who took the initial shot and followed it up. That was one of the guys we talked about earlier that can do it for him. Teddy comes up with another nice save, but he's in the crease when he pulled that ball back away from Teddy Sawicki. I would, uh, yeah, the knees had to be the one that got him in the crease, and then the knees were real close to the line. Very close call. Could be a factor in the game. John Tucker takes a shot that is deflected wide. We'll take a break. The Turbos lead three to nothing, but still only in the first quarter. We're back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Leif Elsmo and Bill Barroza. Bill, one of the questions we had coming in was Sawicki's mental outlook on this game. He was a little bit shocked last week by all those goals. He looks to be very strong and back on top of this game. He looks fantastic so far tonight. And I, I, he's such a competitor that uh, he's not going to let one game make a difference in how he plays the rest of the season. Maybe. But you know, as a goalie, uh, sometimes you start questioning yourself a little bit. If he had taken a couple early goals, I suspect it would have really hurt him mentally. Not the case, though. He looks very strong. The other end of the field, Eliu not having a great last four minutes. Well, he just made one beautiful save on Peter Park, and, and we talked about Peter. He's a great target inside at 6-5, but uh, Dallas came up big there. That'll be Philadelphia's turn with two minutes left in the first period to get their first goal. Big time. Ricky Freed right now in the first game. We saw him separate his shoulder. It's good to see him back out here. Number 13 working the offense against Sebastian. What's really puzzling me, Leaf, is that, is that they keep this uh, this offense where they're getting one shot, and that's all they're taking. And again, it's not the best shot with five seconds running down on the time clock. They got a reset there. Now they get the ball back. One on one in close. Tony Resch. 3-1. The Wings get their first goal. One of the leaders of this team, Tony Resch, not known for his scoring ability, uh, just was in the right place at the right time. He was on the USA team as a defenseman. And, uh, but again, doesn't matter who scores. The score is now 3-1, and uh, that's the important thing. Well, one of the uh, marvelous things about this indoor league is that some of the great athletes that play defense, you being one of them, have come into this league and contributed in the offensive game of the major indoor lacrosse league. None better than Tony Resch. Showing his leadership right there, wearing the C on his jersey, and putting the first goal in for Philadelphia. They get the faceoff, very important faceoff behind the back feed. Pressure on Sawicki. Two fakes, and just wide of the goal. I'll tell you what Teddy does so well is he holds his ground, and he makes the shooter find an open spot. Matt McGinney levels a check, and now it's Delegati on a foot race with Paul Gate. He's going to wrap him up. down to help Paul, but here's Delgado looking for a takedown. This would go in the World Wrestling League. Well, I'll tell you, he's, he's probably just trying to make Paul aware that he's out there on the floor, and uh, the first one to Paul's side was Gary. The Gates have taken a ferocious pounding for the defenses of every team they face. Paul now loses a little bit of concentration. Two players playing Paul Gate. They wrap him up, and here goes Philadelphia. 
It's a delayed call. They'll go against Philadelphia, and it will set Detroit up with their first two-minute extra man play. Only 55 seconds left in this first period, so they'll have a minute here. If they don't get it by then, they'll have a minute to open the second quarter. Well, we're going to get a chance to see one of the most exciting power plays in the league. And the reason I say that is it's a lot of behind-the-back, flashy kinds of things, but it, it's not that they don't do it well. They do it real well. They start this power play with Gary Gate up top as the trigger man. He's got Martinello's on either end of him. Terry to his right, Ron to his left. Down low, you've got Paul. There's a shot by Terry. You've got Pete Park, and you've got Paul down right next to Elliott. They're sagging in the defense. This is Gary being wrapped by a tough defensive play. Here's a shot in close by Ron Martinello. Ball loose and back out to Gary. Gary reloads, looks for help. He says, I got a beautiful save. He was looking for that right-hand corner, and uh, Dallas came up with a beautiful save there. And with the velocity of that shot, if he doesn't get that shoulder up, that baby hits the twine. You've got to guess which side he's going to go. A tremendous save by Eliou. Eliou cutting down the angle a little bit and made a nice move to take it out. 24 seconds left in the quarter. 24 in the quarter and still about a minute 30 left in the penalty. This is a real smart move on Coach uh, Martinello's part. What he's doing is putting the second uh, power play unit. And I'll tell you why. The first unit's tired. If they lose the ball, they're going to have a tough time getting back on defense. And you can score with two seconds or three seconds left in this period. This is Jeff Goldberg from the right wing. He'll take a shot there. Elliott makes the save. The defense tries to get it back. Rush can't handle it. Neither can Jeff Goldberg. Rush still tries to pick it up. Eight seconds left. Doddridge there, number three in purple for Detroit. Tony Rush barking at the referees. And they signal that it will be Detroit ball with six seconds left. Sycamore up top. This is Doddridge. He'll take a shot, and Elliott again deflects the ball. That'll do it for the first quarter. They stave off the power play. A little fight breaks out. That won't affect the score, though, because at the end of one, the Turbos take a 3-1 lead with goals by Gary and Paul and Adam Mueller. Philadelphia, we talk about records falling uh, in great numbers tonight. Here's the first one to go. It was a great move by Paul Gate, Bill. I tell you, he drove off of a pick and just put it up in the corner, and we'll probably see that a couple more times tonight. Now, that record was set in this, his sixth game early on, and it broke a record that took eight games to achieve by the great Brad Potts. Out with a broken hand, not here tonight, definitely hurting the Wings. But the Wings have a lot to be happy about. Here in the first quarter, they kept this team from Detroit scores for a lot of that quarter. Three to one, they're in the game. That was Neil Doddridge. Doddridge owns a private seat in that penalty box. He is one of the most penalized players in the league, and I think he's got a long one to sit out here. Seven-minute penalty for Doddridge. He does, and he's got five minutes for grabbing a face mask, and uh, he, he is the league-leading penalty uh, getter. And at the same time, I'll tell you, Coach Martinello will have a conversation with him when he comes off that uh, penalty bench. He does not like being down. The problem here, Elliot took that shot in the face. It went under his mask. He is down, and if he has to come out of this game, that will significantly hurt the defense of Philadelphia. A big, big blow to their defense. Watch the shot. It comes underneath his face mask, and literally he gets under the face mask into his nose area. What to find out how bad this injury is. A tough blow for a very tough defense from Philadelphia. The defense is critical to this team staying in the game. A good, good sign is uh, he's moving around and probably a little bit sore in their leaf, but... Uh... So we're hoping that he's okay. We look at the side, it's Gary Martin putting on the chin strap, getting ready for that offense to get back into it. He's strapping it back on Eliuk. When you look at him, without his helmet on, these guys in the goal where somebody pad, there's Eliuk. He's not a huge guy. You may look at him and think he goes about 230. That's not the case. Eliuk stands 5'10", 180, a very fit and trim athlete who has a lot of pads on because that's what it takes to play goalie in the major in the cross league. And, you know, with all those pads on, Leaf, you can lose seven, eight pounds a game because, uh, because of how hot it is underneath all that equipment. That is one of the factors that plays on the win of every game. We'll have to see how much each offense takes out of these goalies because both of these teams would like to keep these guys in for four quarters. 
They'd like to see Eliud, and they'd like to see Sawicki go the full way. Timeout called by Philadelphia right now as we look at John Tucker leading his team. We'll take a short break. A close game in Philadelphia. Detroit, two goals up, but Philadelphia, through Tony Resch's goal, is the last team to score. Now John Tucker puts the ball in play. He fires down to Conley. Conley a one-on-one -on -one and a beautiful arm save by Ted Sawicki. What really surprised me on that is Danny Pratt was not expecting that pass at all, and, and for being an All-American defenseman from Syracuse, he should have been waiting for that. There was only one guy who could have pulled that ball down, and that was Pratt's man. Now Detroit floating shot. Thanks to the defense of Philadelphia, picked up by Eliud. And this is just after a timeout by Philadelphia to give Eliud time to regain his thoughts. He was hit with a shot under the face mask. I'll tell you what, what you see here is that it, the defense of the man short team has to bring the ball over the midfield line in 10 seconds. So Philadelphia is under a lot of pressure to get that ball clear. Tony Resch, again, uh, Bill, as you said, clearing the ball. And he's the guy that scored the last goal. He's really taking a leadership role. John Tucker running faster than he has in the last 10 years. That's not his style. He blitzed right down the field trying to get the fast break. He's trying to create an odd man situation. And what that is is a two-on-one. Tucker now comes off. Conley goes on to getting fresh players on the field. They want to get an open shot. Curry. Detroit's new. got the breakaway leaf. Teddy Sawicki didn't see him. Paul Gate was all alone. All alone. Gary Gate got the ball, elected to hold it. Todd Curry was the only one in Philadelphia that knew the 40-second shot clock was counting down. Again, they lost possession on a shot clock violation. Well, Philadelphia has now got the extra man, so they should be doubling that ball. I don't think they know that they have the extra man yet. They're figuring it out right now because here comes the double team. But I'll tell you what, double teaming Paul or Gary Gate is really not any advantage. Paul Gate, number 19, right here. Single season record for scoring. Taken off his wheels with a great check. And Philadelphia saying, All right, there's one way to separate the ball from this guy, and that's with the big hit. And they leveled it. That was Mark DeSico, and what a beautiful hit. The DeSico family really has fine tuned the art of defense than the world of lacrosse. And that is one shot that you like to get to get a full run up to a player with the ball. Here's Todd Curry, another player from Syracuse. Tucker from Johns Hopkins up close and a shot off the crease. That hit, that hit the top bar. You know, the uncanny thing, Leaf, is that Gary Gate just passed that ball back to uh, Ted Sawicki. Didn't even look at him, just knew he was there. The instincts really come into play for the Detroit squad. Let's take a look at the hit that leveled Paul. Uh, Gary did a great job beating two guys, and then uh, Mark DeSico said, wait a second, you're not getting a goal on my guy. When you're occupied with the ball, here's Curry trying to get a shot off. That sliding player gets a chance to sight the numbers and get a good three-step run. Ferocious hit. I must tell you that Paul Gate took a shot last week, one of the toughest shots he's had in the world of lacrosse, and knocked him goofy for a little while. Sometimes that affects a player for the rest of the season. Gary Gate comes in, two fakes. Elliott is faked out, but makes the save. And Gary is wrestling in the corner. Guys, won't be any factor now as the ball goes to the other end of the field. Philadelphia has a chance to score. Up top is Tucker. They want to get it to him. Tucker does not get the ball. The shot from the wing. Mark Hahn takes it and another save by Zawicki. Mark Hahn tries to dig it out. Tucker's the only one. Tucker's all by himself. This is control. Leave, leave, this has to be one of the most physical games we've seen so far this uh, 1991 season. Sweet Lou Delegati. just a slip up in in defensive coverage he should have never been standing alone there all by himself for as long as he was well Delegati is a very physical player and that's right you don't give him that much room down and low he's not going to hurt you outside he likes to power in low he's got a great left hand but Detroit is being preoccupied with the physical play of Philadelphia they are really taking it to the turbos and I, I, I'm looking forward to the second half because I think uh, I think the legs on both these teams is going to make it a real exciting game. Chris Flynn facing off for Philadelphia. 
against Monte for Detroit. And again, Detroit gets the faceoff. They have been excellent in that department. But once they get it in the offensive end, you cannot go back into the defensive end. That's what happened. The violation gives Philadelphia the ball. Well, I'll tell you, Leaf, we still got a man in the penalty box. Neil Dodgers in there for a little over uh, three minutes now. So uh, Philadelphia still has some time to capitalize on this extra man. Talked about how critical that would be to their victory if, in fact, they can make it work. They've got to score goals when they get the power play. This is one of those chances. Dodgers putting his team from Detroit into a big hole. Paul Gate now sees two defensive players, so he peels back. His triple team still has the ball. Chris Flynn now picks it up. The All-American from University of Pennsylvania right here. This is his home crowd. He was a great football player and lacrosse player, and he can't quite get the shot off. Patty Lee uh, helped out on that. He hustled back and uh, broke up that three-on-two. Ball being scrummed for in the corner. Finally picked up by Mark Hahn, one of the older players in the league. He's still got sensational speed. Adam Mueller. With a little bit of a roll move, and let's see. We've got a whistle. And a timeout. Vito Martinello says, look, this looks a little bit raggy to me. Let's call a timeout. He does just that. 9.56 left. Detroit holds on to a 3-2 lead. Lou Delegati got the Philadelphia Wings back to within one, and this is how he did it. A patented Delegati power move. Well, he was right on the crease, and, and uh, I don't know who the Detroit player was. We were blocked there out of view, but he, should, he was too many steps away from him. Should have been there closer. And sweet dude Delegati, there he is. A tremendous scoring threat for Philadelphia. They need all the scoring threats they can get. Gary Gay comes in, and what a sweet move. Fakes the left hand, comes around with a backhand left shot, and he had Elliott all over that net, not knowing where the shot was coming from. Gary Gate with a shot that only he and his brother can do. He looked like he shoveled that thing in backwards. Comes in lefty, pulls it to the other side, and just, and just backhanded it in there. Tremendous shot by Gary Gate. He's putting Detroit up by two again. Now Paul has one goal. Gary, that's the second of the night. Two goal lead now as we are 9.48 left in the second quarter. Plenty of time left. And that was a shorthanded goal as well. So even though Detroit's got a man in the penalty box, uh, Detroit scored with one less player on the field. And don't forget, that was after a timeout. Vito Martinello got his guys calmed down. He said, look, let's put that ball in the stick of Gary and Paul, and let's let them get some open green area. That's what happens when you're a man down. You get a little bit more green space, more bodies on you, but you get more chances to shoot. Well, Detroit's got their defensive guys out there right now. This is Philadelphia's power play. Tucker, he's a quarterback up top. And a shot in close. Boy, that was one they like to have back. Paul Denikin missed the net. Delegati fighting with Sebastian behind the net. That won't draw any penalty. Paul Denikin had a shot right on the crease. Missed the 4x4. Four four. Actually, 4x4.5 four four this year. Well, the defensive players for Detroit did the job. They stopped them, got the ball back, got it cleared, and now Detroit put their offensive machine back on the floor. Here comes Terry Martinello, a tremendous shooter. And coming off the side, it was easy pickings against Eliuk. Goal number five, a three-goal lead for Detroit. 9.07 left, second quarter. We pick up action at the Spectrum about five minutes later into the second quarter, just after a goal by Paul. Denikin. It's 5-3 to three. Philadelphia now after the two goals by the Turbos. Gary Gates scored. Mar Martinello scored. Terry and now 5-3 to three with a great drive by Paul Gates. Let's take a look at the Denikin goal that got them back to within two. I think they hadn't been down shooting on Teddy Sawicki for so long, Leaf, that he probably got just a little bit lackadaisical. I think also a factor in that, that the moment, the play before that, Bill, Sawicki was out. He was running around the sidelines. He was playing the ball on the perimeter and really got a little more tired than he normally would. Probably not quite settled yet. Tamburino comes over. Rich Tamburino, one of the referees. And now I think we're going to have somebody else take a little spin to the box. players walking that way it's hard to tell who yeah this game keeps going back and forth look at this crowd this is an unbelievable arena for the game of major indoor lacrosse 17,000 expected here today a sellout they've got over 8,000 season tickets they love the indoor game and they love the Philadelphia Wings two-time defending champions Bill you talked about playing in this arena it's quite awesome 
it is uh, it's tough to play here. This crowd is loud, and you can hear it down on the floor. And it's hard to hear your other uh, players giving you commands when, when the fans uh, make a lot of noise down there. Terry Martinello, this is a power play in close. What a save by Eliu. They made three passes. It was Ron Martinello to Terry Martinello, number five. They got it into big Pete Park. And Pete Park at six foot five. When he gets it, it's Eliu who makes the save. I'll tell you, Terry Marnell had a chance for a one-on-one, -on -one and 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 I would have counted on that thing 100% going in by Peter Park. But uh, again, he should have shot it right away instead of holding on to it for as long as he did. Eliu came up with a beautiful save, and we've got a uh, Philadelphia wing Philadelphia. going to the bench. Chris Flynn, face-off specialist, goes into the box. Could be a bench penalty. Could be the in-home. We we'll have to find out. It's five, well, it's five on four, which it has been in that last series. Eliu makes the save. The ricochet goes in, and that shot had such velocity that uh, getting a piece of it didn't matter. That ball went in. Six to three. A three-goal lead once again for the Turbos. Ron Martinello is uh, one of the leading scorers in the league as, as well as on the Turbos, but uh, they're letting them come in too close. They've got to get out and pressure the shooters on the point. But I guess at the same time, Leaf, they don't want to pressure. If they pressure the points, then that leaves it open on the crease for Peter Park and for uh, Gary Gate. Well, you talked about the explosiveness of this power play. It's one of the most feared in the league as we look at Ronnie Martinello. Uh, who do you cover and how do you cover him? It's just so many ways to turn when, you're, when they have the advantage. It's scary. And Philadelphia electing to drop in, pack in a little bit. Didn't work that time. They're really putting the pressure on Elliot. He made the first great save, not the second. Six to three now the score. And all three goals scored in this quarter by the Turbos were not at even strength. They scored their first two man down, shorthanded, with Dodgers was spending that seven minutes in the box. The last one they were man up. John Tucker. In close to Gabrielson, and what a save by Sawicki. Teddy's stopping them low, he's stopping them high, he's stopping them wherever they're shooting. And one thing Philadelphia is going to have to start doing is they're going to have to start using picks better. Again, a good play there. Sweet play, Tucker gets the attention and dishes it inside and when the defense starts sliding. There again, Tucker finds the man. He does it as well as anybody. That is one of the reasons Tucker is a feared player in this league. He can shoot and he can feed. You never know which. He's exceptional at both. Tucker looking for some help. He's calling the sideline, but now he stays in because the fast break was running right by him. Pete Park against the Seco. Park inside to Rodriguez and another great save by Elliott. Coming up very strong in the second quarter. Gary Gate, interference they're calling. Ball goes back to Philadelphia. Coach Evans has to be pleased with the performance of Dallas Elliott so far. The He's question is, uh, how far can he go, Bill? Can you put up this much? He's really been extended in the second period. He's working hard. And as you talked about, you're losing pounds of weight. You're losing a lot of fluids. You just can't go four quarters at that pace. Well, that means the rest of the team's going to have to pick up and help out. And they're going to get it, have to get a couple goals. McAvoy takes a hard shot wide of the net. They only have five seconds left on the shot clock, Leaf. They're going to lose it. Looks like it's going to be turned over. Free with a great little dish move. He tries to put one on. He does! And it goes in! Ricky Free was just trying to reset the shot clock. He was not ready for that one at all. That cost him dearly. Well, I have to apologize to the fans. I said that it looks like they're going to turn the ball over. And again, shot that thing with one second left. It might have been a little bit of a screen or it might have been tipped in. His own player really got in the way of Sawicki. His own player sort of stood right in front of the shot, picked up his foot at the last moment, and just distracted Sawicki enough. Six to four. The wings backed it within two again. Gotta like their position. If you're Evans, Dave Evans, the coach of Philadelphia, coming in here with a potential blowout, you really have to wonder about uh, his defensive strategy. It has worked so far. He's taken the air out of the ball, slowed it down. Ricky Free, that's his third goal of the season. And again, the first time we saw him play against the same Detroit squad, he was taken out with an injury, a severe injury to the shoulder. It's good to see him back playing, and he makes a big contribution here in the first half. Sweet Lou Delegati. Philadelphia gets the faceoff. Chris Flynn stays in there. He's the faceoff specialist. That's him right there. John Conley above him. Flynn takes a hard shot from outside. Controlled by Todd Curry. All-American from 
from Syracuse. Cutting John Conley right down the cylinder, but a save by Sawicki. Yeah, Adam Mueller got that ball. He started that break. Here's a guy from Michigan State University who, uh, you know, questioned whether or not he made the team a couple years ago. And he's just playing very well for him. Started that break and again ended with Terry Martinello scoring, I think, his second goal of the evening. Martinello scores the second of the last three. It's been Ron and Terry for the last three goals. And what a fast break they led right there. It was Ron on the far side. You see his legs at the top of the screen. He drew the attention. Watch, he'll draw the attention and dish it off. Yeah. Terry's a natural lefty, and again, when you move a goalie from one side of the goal to the next, it's a uh, it's open game for shooting there, and Terry had the whole goal. So Philadelphia having a tough time getting to closer than two goals. Every time they get one, the Turbos answer. Tucker finds the corner. Seven to five. Philadelphia comes back. Well, you talked about John Tucker doing it all. What a beautiful shot. And again, that, that probably was uh, from looking at the game films of the New York game last week. They said they know that they can score from the outside on Sawicki, but you got to hit the corner. And that's exactly what he did there. When you think about it, as we look at John Tucker, you think about the last three goals for Philadelphia, they are all kind of weird. And the fact that they're goals that Sawicki normally saves nine out of ten times, they're not that difficult. That shot by Tucker was certainly not difficult. Ricky Freeze was a joke. And then Paul Denikin had a weird shot to go into Sawicki. So you got to wonder about Sawicki. Is he up to par? I think Teddy's playing a great game tonight. I wouldn't discount him at all. We'll see how it lasts. Eliuk has come on stronger in this period. Sawicki has let in a few goals that he normally doesn't do. He is an all-pro, first-team all-pro goalie. 126 left in the second quarter. 7-5, the Wings hanging on to this in close against Eliuk, and he is knocked off his position by DeSico. Well, Detroit uses that bench play very well. What they do is they send a the guy right to the defensive end of the box, and that's where the players are, and send the guy out, and they pick up about five, six yards on, on the uh, Philadelphia team. Gary Martin takes a shot. Last minute of play, the bounced out. I haven't seen the gates on the field too much lately. Maybe Mito Marnell saving them. Philadelphia, they have possession. They have 32 seconds on the shot clock, 51 in the quarter. That's for the first half. They're down by two. They'd love to get a goal right here. Let's take a look at next week's Game of the Week on Prime Network. We're going to Pittsburgh, and the New England Blazers, last year's surprise team, the Cinderella team from last year, they were the regular season co-champion, actually champion by way of tiebreaker. They are going against the Pittsburgh Bulls. The Pittsburgh Bulls, that'll be our game next week. The Pittsburgh Bulls, Bill, are the team that has a chance, if any team does, of catching the Detroit Turbos. And here, Mito Martinello, a little bit concerned because his team is only two goals up in the indoor league. That's basically a tie game. Yeah, you're right, it could go either way. And that's why I said earlier in the game, uh, I said I'm anxious to, for the second half because Detroit is not the fastest team in the league and Philadelphia has some speed that might be able to take them over the top and and, and uh, be to their advantage in the second half of this uh, game. Well they've saved themselves a little bit because they have had the tempo going much to their liking. Now they've called a play. What do you expect to see here? Well it's interesting because Mito Martinell last time he called one Detroit came right back again shorthanded and scored and I, I would think there's going to be some pick and that's what they did. They tried to get Tucker open off a pick. He, uh, they just missed the pass on that. Uh, Curry was the feeder, and Curry normally isn't in that position. Normally it is Tucker. Ryan Lemon, the Canadian out front. Here's Paul Gate in close, and it comes off the pipe. Elio gets help from the cylinder of that cage. Still Detroit with the ball. So Philadelphia sort of put a little wrinkle in their offensive end of the field, and it was Todd Curry who had a bad pass to a John Tucker, normally the feeder. Ball loose. Todd Curry picks it up. They've only got five seconds left. They have to get a shot off. Curry will come right down and take it. Three, two. From the wing, saved by Sawicki. That's the way it'll stand after the first half. The Turbos holding on to a two-goal lead, but one whole half left to go in Philadelphia. the spectrum in Philadelphia for the Coors Light halftime report. 
And at the half, the Detroit Turbos coming in heavily favored, lead 7-5 to five over the two-time defending champion Philadelphia Wings. It'll be a dogfight to the end. You know, one of the biggest announcements of the year out of league headquarters of the MILL in Kansas City happened this week when they announced the addition to their staff of the general manager and vice president, Rick Nichols. They wooed him away from the Houston Oilers of the NFL. He will make a great contribution to this league, and we had a chance to talk to him earlier today. And I guess the first question we all would ask you, Rick Nichols, is what do you expect to bring to the MILL from the National Football League in this first year and on down the road? Well, first of all, I'm really fortunate to be here because the, the two owners of the league, Russ Klein and Chris Fritz, have done a great job of setting it up and nurturing the league to the point where it's ready to grow. Uh, the league employees and the club employees have done a good job of bringing it again to the same level. So I'm in a position to help guide its growth and bring in some new sponsorships, look at some other areas such as expansion. We want to look at improving our good relationships that we already have with the different venues. We have a, a lot of different things in our plates. But I hope that my experience in the National Football League will help upgrade the credibility of the league, help us in promotional avenues, and just generally improve the image throughout the country. Now, if you've seen the NFL, we all know what that's all about. We love that as an entertainment vehicle, as a sport. From what you've seen, and I realize that this is your first week on the job, as it were, from what you've seen of this great indoor sport, your comments. This sport is so fast moving, so fast paced. It's one of those run them and crunch them kind of sports, and it's really enthusiastic. I like it. I like the players. Uh, they don't play for the mega bucks. They play for the love of the game, and I think it shows on the field here. And I, I think that's going to translate. I think what we have to do is educate the consumer and show them what an exciting sport it is. It's going to take a little time to increase that fan base, but I, I don't think as long as some people think. I think this is the sport of the future. It's definitely one of the fastest growing sports, and I'm really happy to be a part of it. Well, our thanks to Rick Nichols, one of the most positive things that has happened to the major indoor lacrosse league this year. We're back at the spectrum with our Coors Light halftime report. There's the score, 7-5. to five. Very surprisingly close game, and uh, no surprise to Bill Barroza. He's seen this Philadelphia team over the years. They are a veteran team, a team that really rises to the occasion when they have to. And I think that's exactly what they're doing tonight. They are. They're playing very well. Uh, they start off slow, but a 7-5 game, Dave Evans has to be pleased with that performance. They're, uh, they're counting on the play of Dallas Elliott in the goal, and he's coming up big for them. So I think their legs in the second half will help them. Tempo has been a big part of it. Let's take a look at some of the scoring in the first half. Of course, the Gate brothers a big part of it. Paul Gate set the new single-season scoring record on this left-handed goal to give him 29 for the year. You see that play over and over again, Leaf. He just drives to the goal. Again, an overhand shot right in the corner. And then John Tucker, who is the leader of the Philadelphia squad, has been every year he's been on this team. This is the goal that made it 7-5. to five. That's how it ended in the halftime. What a rocket shot from out front. And that's what makes Tucker so dangerous. He can take that outside shot. He can work inside, as we saw Dave Evans try to set him up to do earlier on. And he's a quarterback. He can feed from anywhere. He does make a difference on this team, Leaf. And I tell you, that shot sitting up here in the booth, I saw it. I thought that was going into the stands. But I think so did Teddy Sawicki. What do you look for for the second half? I look for, the same. Yeah, but I, but I tell you, what I look for is the same thing, but I think Philadelphia is going to come out with their legs. And I, I, I expect them to run on Detroit. That's going to be the story. It'll be the speed of the players taking its toll. We'll be back with the third quarter action from our major indoor lacrosse league. Well, here are how the stats show up for the first half action. And look how even they are, Bill Barroza. It's uh, it's right on target. Uh, that's why the score is seven five. Uh, both teams are just playing equal and and both goalies are hot and cold, but they're coming up with a lot of one on one saves. Well, so Wiki starting off red hot. Elliu playing the second quarter red hot. There's your score seven to five. And it was a very busy second quarter. The game really did get going about nine minutes in to the game. And that's how long it took before Gary Gate got the first score three straight by the turbos. And then it was Tony Resch who answered. That was the first quarter scoring, 3-1. to one. And let's take a look at the goalies, Eliuk and Sawicki. That's Eliuk. We saw Sawicki, number 30 for the Turbos in purple. The same goalies that started the game. We talked about that, Bill. Both of these teams like to go as far as they can with these two players. They are that good. Well, that, I'd count on them, and I, and I, if I was coaching, I'd do the same exact thing. They're both playing well, and uh, you got to go with your best guy. 
Pensawiki, first team all pro. It's getting Last physical year. down there, Leaf. It's getting real physical. They are rock'em, sock'em. That's Gary Martin hitting in there, cross-checking. And it looks like he may spend some time in the box. They're going to take two players, Martin and Paul Gate. Now, that may be a tactic. Go ahead. If you can put Paul Gate in the box, he's not going to score very many goals. So Martin and Paul Gate will be simultaneous fouls. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I would trade Paul Gate for uh, Gary Martin out. Uh, you know, the leading scorer in the league is now sitting on the bench with uh, Gary Martin, uh, certainly someone that can score, but but more so a uh, defensive player for the Philadelphia Wings. The simultaneous fouls will allow these teams uh, a four-on-four -four opportunity. But one thing I noticed, Leif, it wasn't just Gary Martin and Paul Gate going at it. It was Tony Resch with Gary gate as well so it might have been a uh, a tactic that they were going to try with both of them so they're really trying to step up the physical play to occupy the twin turbos and, and the, the difference now leaf is we got a four on four and uh i think that's to both teams advantage but more so detroit it opens up the field and and when gary's got the ball it's going to allow him to beat his man and go clear cleanly to the goal and they have another canadian out there number 25 brian lennon for detroit he is an excellent open field player he'll be dangerous if he gets his possession now Pat Lee gets the ball for Detroit comes in a good check from Ricky Freed behind him and Freed picks up the ball again well, Patty Lee's not a he's not an offensive threat I mean he's out there for his defensive abilities he should have pulled away with that ball and given that to Gary Look tremendously fluid in the fast break with good hustle by Pat Lee. Now it's Philadelphia. They each have a player in the box. It's four on four right now. Ricky Freed up front. Tries to get it into Manley. We call that the Peterborough pick and roll, and they, they executed that well, except the pass just didn't hit the man. But in this case, the man Lee. Greg Manley inside trying to pick it up. Well, they're, they're looking, they're using the same tactics uh, Detroit used on them in the first half of the game. And it's a great play. Hey, Bill, we'll see now if Gary Gay can really take advantage of that extra green space. He didn't look like he was anxious to go ahead and uh, go shoulder to shoulder with the defense. I think he's been out there a while. He might be a little bit tired. Uh, Mino Martinello relies on the great ability of the Gate brothers, so they do spend a lot of time on the floor. Early in the third period, 7-5, to five, the Turbos lead with Philadelphia threatening here. They've had the ball most of the third quarter. This is Van Pratt gives it to Terry Martinello. No wheels on this unit. <laughs> they keep him in there. This is Pratt coming down. Mueller's way down the field as well, along with Ronnie Martinell. Knocked down. Let's see if they can work against that. We got a three on two right now. McGady over to Delgatti. All the way across. Back to McGady. A fake and a score. Detroit did not have a fast unit on there. They elected to keep him on when they went into transition, and they paid the price. Seven to six. Philadelphia back to within one. I'll tell you, three different players touched the ball, and they did a great job and moved. Got the goal for them. Seven to six. The wings are coming back. Here we see the uh, goal again by Matt McGeady. He had plenty of time to score that, and uh, again, they just unselfish in passing the ball. Really moved it well against uh, a unit that was out there for a while. Uh, it was interesting. We talked about it. They started to move from defense to offense, and they did not switch the lines. That line for Detroit was a little bit tired playing defense against a very unselfish offense for Philadelphia. Trying to hit Lou Delgatti on the far pipe. Matt McGeady comes on. Ball moves over now to McGeady. He just scored the last goal. Interesting to note. Six goals for Philadelphia, Bill DeRosa. Six different players with those six goals. Well, when you don't have Brad Cox on the floor, you got to count on some other players. Todd Curry's one of them. Seven goals, seven players scoring in a tie ball game. Well, besides Todd score, uh, Curry scoring that goal on a, on a nice bounce shot, and I think when Teddy went down to, to make that shot, it actually hard to see, but it probably went through his legs. That's what happened, opened up. Those two goals, last two goals are 45 seconds apart, so in this MILL game, you see a high score and a lot of scores. All tied up, the Wings have scored the last three goals. They've scored four of the last five goals to get back to a deadlock. 
Bill Barroso, you might have been standing alone by yourself before this game, saying that it was going to be a close one. There was every indication in the pregame buildup that Detroit, being burned last week, would come in, help them for a big win. They have a sensational offense, and so far, Philadelphia has really done what they've had to do. They've controlled the tempo and taken advantage of some very select opportunities. Yeah, but I, I'll tell you, a difference maker is this crowd of 17,000 plus people. I mean, they certainly help the Wings, and they don't want to lose at home. I'll tell you what, the crowd uh, doesn't get tired as the game goes on. They get better as the game goes on. Ball pushed into the wing, picked up now by Elio. He looks immediately for the fast break, and the outlet is not there. And the defense was packing it back in. It was Suckamore, and now Philadelphia changes the line. Here comes Johnny Tucker, comes in, ducks it into the Gabriel Sin, and he can't get it past Sawicki. Well, one thing Detroit's doing is they're getting back in the hole, and I'm sure Coach Martinello told them, guys, do not be lazy. After we take a shot, we got to turn, get back in, so that we don't give up pass breaks. Here's a line that's been very effective. Ronnie Martinello, six. His brother, Terry Martinello, number five. They've scored that combination the last three goals for Detroit. So the Gates are really been taken out of the game since early in the second quarter. Ron Martinello pushes it in deep. Mark Hahn plays defense. Good body position. Now the moving pick sets up. Terry wide open, looks for the feed. And the shot clock expires. We'll take a break. Game's all tied. We're 10 minutes left in the third. We join you from the Spectrum in Philadelphia later in the third quarter. We left you 7 to 7. Gary Gate took his Detroit Turbos ahead 8 to 7. Then Pete Park, man down for Detroit, made it 9 to 7. And Lou Delgatti just scored the eighth goal for Philadelphia to bring Philadelphia back to within one. 9 to 8 is where we are. 5.50 left in the third. Lee Bell's bow along with Bill Barroza. And look at the Gary Gate power as he comes through two, three defensemen. He, he does that constantly. And I'll tell you, uh, Philadelphia is defending him well today. The one thing that, that I said that I thought I'd see in the second half was a fast-breaking Philadelphia team, and we're not seeing that. Matt McGady and Sawicki makes the arm save. Philadelphia now, one goal down, checking hard and close, and a shot by Chris Flynn is saved by Sawicki again. Sawicki looking very sharp in the third quarter. 5-16 left in the third, 9-8, Detroit up by one, and McGady with a nice check from behind. He's looking for help, he's looking for the lob, pulls it in, watch the check as he gets it along the sideline by Dan Pratt. A lot of pushing, a lot of shoving, I imagine the fourth quarter is going to be brutal physically. Bill. Oh, I'll tell you, it's, going to, it, it's been brutal already. Here they use that pick again. And they get a piece of it, though, and that's what they've been successful at. They get a piece of the shot and uh, keep them getting that clean shot at Dallas Elliott. The Gates are out there for a little while now. They've been running hard and long. Gary Gate got the third goal of the game for him. He's got a hat trick already. But other than that, Paul hasn't scored since the first quarter. Paul now gets the ball for the Turbos. 4.25 left, third quarter. Philadelphia, the two-time defending champion team, fighting for not only respectability, because they were spanked by this Detroit team in Detroit earlier this year, but they've got to keep pace with the Baltimore Thunder in their division. Terry Martinello, sensational move. He's got a great stick. They hit me with that left hand. Yeah, but I'm surprised he took a shot from the left-hand side of the goal because what you do is you continue as you run left on the goal, you cut off your own angle, so he shot with nothing to shoot at. Now he's a little bit tired. Let's see if they work against him defensively. Tucker, hard shot, and Johnny Tucker brings Philadelphia back to a 9-9 game. That's the guy you count on. this shot you know that was the second one went through Ted's legs so Tucker brings back the wings to a tie game we regain action in the third quarter a minute 30 left 9-9 John Tucker scored the last goal but look at this he's defending his team his championship against the great intruder Paul Gate one of the twin turbos comes in John Tucker captain with a separated shoulder goes against physically the gate combination. They both are now on the penalty box 
And that was right before the Turbo scored the 10th goal. That got them two minutes in the box. And then just moments ago, this is the goal with Gary setting it up. Well, Gary brings it down, feeds it to Pete Park all alone on the crease. And Pete's so good on the crease, you don't want to give him that much time to just fake the goalie and move, make a move out of position. And Manley was a little bit late on the slide. You've got to move that big guy out of there. He's 6'5", 220. And as you mentioned, you give him that much time, no way you can stop the shot. So Park gets another goal, second in a row. To put Detroit up by one. A lot of time left, though. The third quarter winding down, but a whole 15 minutes fresh for the fourth. And this thing will be a dogfight. Detroit reloads their offense. Park now way out front, but he'll end up down around the crease. This is Jeff Goldberg, acquired from New York last year. Goldberg likes to shoot from there. He's a natural righty. That's where he likes to be. Looking out front, takes one with little or no angle, but gets the rebound and a great save by Elliott. What a save by Dallas. Boy, I'll tell you, that save was key. If Detroit had gotten that just before the close of this third period leaf, I think that might have broken the camel's back. 47 seconds, 47 seconds left in the third period. And let's watch this. Tremendous save. And Bill Barroso, you know full well, you're an All-American goalkeeper at Roanoke, and you started in this league as a goalkeeper. You played the last two years being an exceptional athlete, if I can pat you on the back, on the field position. You played the offense, but you know what Dallas has to go through. Now you're at the end of the third quarter. You're entering the fourth. You've lost that five, six pounds of water. It's getting tough. Oh, yeah. You're tired there, and uh, you hope and want that your offensive players will get some goals for you. Your quarter clock. Turbo's with a slim lead, and Goldberg comes in again. He has a chance to score. And Philadelphia doing a nice job of tying up the big offensive threats and letting Goldberg shoot. Uh, we have under 20 seconds to go right now, and Philadelphia has a chance to tie it up. Chris Flynn bounces one off the pipe. Tough break for Philly. Then it takes a shot into Doddridge. Chris Flynn really, really, really upset. He comes down on a fast break, had the shot, beat Sawicki. At least he got him past it, but the pipe saved Detroit. And Chris Flynn just missed getting the tying goal. 15 seconds left in the third. Plenty of time for Detroit to get a good shot and a goal. Let's see now. Rich Tamburino coming over to the bench, and he sets the ball in play. Clock now moving. Martella puts it in play, and a diving shot from the far side. Back up to Ronnie Martinello, and he takes one well out in front. The shot clock not a factor, and the clock winds down the third period. Whoa, that'll do it as we move toward the fourth. 10 to 9, Detroit holding on to that slim lead. Our Prime Network exclusive coverage of the Major England Lacrosse League continues next week at Pittsburgh. It'll be New England, the New England Blazers against the Pittsburgh Bulls. And the feature there, among other things, will be Joe and Mark Gold, two of the best players in this league, playing against each other for the first time in their life. And these guys are sensational players in the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. Pittsburgh with a chance to catch the Turbos. The New England Blazers really forced to win to have a chance to get into their division hunt for the championship. 17,000 plus, it's a sellout here in Philadelphia, wanting the Wings to go ahead and beat this seemingly unbeatable team from Detroit, and they are very close to having that chance. They're only down by one, Bill. This, I would say, is a great spot, and a spot that Dave Evans would love to be in right here, one goal down, entering the fourth. Oh, I'll tell you, if he, can, if he can hold this to a one-goal lead, Philadelphia can, can uh, come back and win this thing. Terry Martinello rocked twice, but has enough uh, left to get the ball off to Brock. And moves up to, up to Ronnie Martinello. And Terry takes a shot, and he immediately is leveled by Gabrielson. Now Mueller with the ball on the wing. This is the Martinello line. So in the fourth quarter, the gate line taking a breather. Ronnie Martinello. Moving over, switching sides with Terry. Terry now comes back in. Terry gets a blow. He's coming off. Rodriguez will come in. Ball checked away. Good defense by Tony Rich. Yeah, Philadelphia's playing very, very good defense. And Detroit's not doing what they were doing in the first half, using the picks well. Philadelphia mauling the inside play, just not giving him any room, really playing physical, more physical than they have all year. Look at Tony Rush. Totally exhausted and close. A behind-the-back shot. Saved by a 
alley -oop. That was just a beautiful setup by uh, Armando Rodriguez looking for Ronnie Marnello cutting back door. But again, Dallas making a big save there. The exhausted player was Gary Martin, number 33 from Penn State. He comes off that sensational defensive unit led by Martin and Resch. They come off. Now the fresh offensive legs come on the field. Conley now with the ball for McGeady. McGeady the free spirit. Conley the MVP from last week's win. Down to Todd Curry, great All-American from Syracuse. Played one year with the Gate Brothers. Comes around the goal, little or no angle, and bounces one for the corner. Misses it. The shot clock did not hit the 4 by 4 so the shot clock did not reset. They lose possession. And the bad, the bad thing for Philadelphia is they're only getting one shot on goal and then turning it back over to Detroit. They've got to take a shot earlier, hope to get a rebound, and then take advantage of two or three shots on goal. And now if that tempo situation has worked for you, here's Pete Park. This is what he likes to do. He gets himself positioned beautifully on the crease. He burned this same Philadelphia team for three goals, a hat trick in the first meeting, just in that same spot. John Conley going up against Jack Sebastian, the All-American defenseman from the University of New Hampshire. Ricky Free cuts across and couldn't quite handle it. Tries the behind-the-back shot. Getting back to the comment, Bill, about tempo. Tempo has worked in your favor for Philadelphia. Do you want to change that now and shoot earlier to get a better shot? I think they need to. I think uh, they can't. They can't sit back and play an outside game. Shot comes in by Mueller and rockets off the pipe. Dallas Eliot gets a little help there. Both goalies using those pipes. Detroit still in the offense. Mueller now comes in, pushes in the cylinder, but check from behind the ball loose. We'll take a break. One fourth. Philadelphia has got the plays hop and watch the follow-up shot by Chris Flynn to tie the game. Yeah, what happened to set that play up? Uh, we missed it, but there was a Detroit player that hit the ball back to Teddy Sawicki. It just happened to hit a Philadelphia player. Not a good play right in front of your own goal. You don't do that. So Chris Flynn ties the game at 10. You talked about the legs. You talked about the player and team speed. Bill, this is the fourth quarter, and this is where it'll start to show itself, if, in fact, it's going to be a factor. Terry Martinello with the ball. Rodriguez comes in for face-off specialist. Well, Jacques Monty actually takes a face-off sleeve, and he's doing a fine job for Detroit tonight. He's really worked himself into a... We got a sensational role there yeah. as face-off specialist. Well, we got Teddy Suwicki out. We've got a, a delayed penalty here, so we got an extra man on the floor for the turbos. And Martinello comes in and takes not a great shot, but he hurries up the shot. They had a delayed situation, which means they had a chance to go ahead and set up any offense they wanted. Ronnie Martinello sort of hurrying that 6-1-5 advantage, but it still puts them in a power, power play position. It'll be five players with full complement for Detroit against four for Philadelphia. Now, this defensive unit for Philadelphia has been pretty strong all night long. They've, uh, they've moved the ball real well, and I tell you, uh, I'm looking to see if, yep, Paul is back on the field, so they've got both twin turbos here, Gary and Paul Gate. So uh, we'll look for some fancy passes here. Now the power play, picked off beautifully. Ball goes to Eliup. Now Gary Martin picks it up. Couldn't quite hit Tony Resch. McGeady goes down and puts pressure on Sowicki. Let's see what the call is. Too many men, that's the call. And they're going to put another player in the box for Philadelphia. This is going to put Detroit in a very enviable five on three situation. And does the pressure really get great on Dallas Elliott? Well, when you have Paul and Gary Gate out there on the floor, it's like having two Gretzkys, and now they're going to be two men up. So, uh, and if I'm the goalie, I, I don't want that at all. I mean, I don't want to be playing five on three. And they'll be two men up for a minute and 47 seconds. This is really asking a lot of your defense. The defense will be Ricky Freed up top, number 13. And below him will be DeSico, 25, and Gary Martin, 33. I would suspect they'll be trying to work some players in there if they get tired, like the great Tony Resch. And there's Elliot right now. The pressure is on him. They need to get the ball and then burn up some of the clock. 
five against three. What's really surprising is uh, Dan Pratt. I'll tell you, this is a coaching uh, dream. He's got Dan Pratt all the way back playing defense just in case Detroit loses the ball and doesn't score. They'll cut off any Philadelphia break. He's not even in the extra man play. Well, Vito Martinell likes to play it five, four on three, rather. And that's what he's got right now. Ball saved by Eliu. Oh. Uh, I was talking to Vito Martinell yesterday about that. He says he doesn't like the five on three. He likes the four on three. He likes a two on one. He likes a five on four. And the five on three, he just assumed give it away and take the four against the three. And that's what he's got right now. Tremendous athletes down there. This is Gary Gate off to the side. Ronnie Martinello, what a shooter. He parked down low. Ball knocked down and picked up by Ronnie. Gary Gate wide open and he just misses the net. Well, Mito Martinello might want to rethink his, uh, his strategy. And Dallas Elliott, boy, is he pleasing the fans with a lot of one-on-one -on -one saves. Great saves, but they've got to take some pressure off him. Here comes again, four on three. Park takes a shot, and another save. Elliu just launches the ball down the crowd. Very, very impressed with his play. What a little stretch for Elliu. Well, Gary Martin took off, and now it's, now it's, uh, well, Tony Resch comes in quickly, but those guys have been out there a while. They've got to be getting tired. And that was a save earlier on by Elio. Here they come in close. Paul Gate snuffed again, and this time he makes the score. How long can you keep him out of the net? Paul Gate put intense pressure on Elio. Can finally dance the net with the crowd. Loves the defensive play. Standing ovation for this kind of save. Well, we saw the first save, and again, you can't give him that second chance right on the crease. But but uh, the Wings did a great job playing man down with, uh, again, four or five against three, depending on how you look at it. They just couldn't get the, the ball back in their stick. They saved. Detroit have had a half a dozen save. That was a goal for Paul Gate. And that's his second goal of the game. He scored his first goal way back in the first quarter with 358 left. That was the one that broke the record. He has been scoreless since then. He was shut out in the second. He was shut out in the third. So Philadelphia working some magical defense. Detroit now all open. Ronnie Martinell dishes in the park. He's by himself. A sliding Gabrielson came in, but credit that save to Elliot again. Well, if, if I'm if I'm on the Gary Gate Paul Gate line, I tell you, I'm going to be tired after this game because they're out there a lot this evening or this afternoon, actually. It's five one four now. Again, a power play against Philadelphia. They've really dug a hole for themselves with the two penalties. And right now, it's still five on four. Here comes the even up man. Chris Flynn comes in, but Ronnie will still shoot man up, and Eliup makes a huge save. There's Chris Flynn with the ball. He just came out of the box. Now the crowd rises to the occasion. That could have been a lot worse, Bill. They could have easily have scored two goals. You've got to give a little credit to that man down D. They did a job. They did an excellent job, and we got a tie ball game. Gabrielson rockets in a shot. And this ball game is tied at 11. You know what happens, Leaf, is when, when Teddy's not playing and constantly being shot on, he relaxes, and then when they do come down again, they hit those corners on him. He's just not ready to make the move. The Wings tied at 11. They've got 17,000 plus on their feet, and they're winning. We we'll pick out the action in the fourth quarter, and let's take a look at Pete Park putting in the 12th goal for Detroit. The defense was split. They made a mistake, Bill, and he was wide open. Yeah, Brian Lemon helped set up that play. He came in and, and set a good pick for uh, Peter Park, and he came in one-on-one. -on -one. I tell you, if I had to vote right now for the Coors Light MVP, it would be this man right here, Dallas Eliuk. Sensational. Watch this save. He, he, he made a beautiful save and then followed up with a second one that was just uh, even more incredible than the first. And that last shot was by Paul Gate. That's almost a gimme for a goal. I think Paul was a little bit cavalier on it. He was so sure that he had an open net. What a save by Dallas Eliuk right now competing very heavily for Coors Light MVP honors. 13 to 11. Pat Lay just scoring another goal. And that's where we are. 13 to 11 with 6.54 left. Yeah, but Pat scored that goal on a rebound after Dallas made another excellent one-on-one -on -one save. So Philadelphia finding themselves now in a little bit of a crunch time situation. They look tired. Break. This is Mueller. Dishes it back to the trailing man. And the trailing man coming up, helping out is Paul Brock from Western Ontario. Brock sets up the play. Martinello, Terry Variety, Duran, Brother Ron. That
checked by Gary Martin is going to be a delayed two minute penalty. So just what Evans does not want. His team now has to stop a goal here. It'll be five on four. They've already pulled the goalie Detroit has so they've got five offensive players or six rather against five and then if they don't if they fail here they'll get an extra man opportunity. Yeah, but what they also did, Leaf, was they changed the entire Detroit line, except for Ron Martinelli. They brought in the Gates. They brought in their power play team. And to Philadelphia's credit, they turned away that offensive threat. Now, Gary Martin goes into the box for two minutes. Six minutes left in the fourth quarter, in the game. Here's the penalty. Watch Gary Martin come in. Comes in with that cross check, and then he'll follow up to the head. The follow up to the head, Bill. That was the two minutes. Yeah, and the, the reason that's a penalty, Leaf, is because he hit him in the head. I mean, you're allowed to cross check. You could slash, but again, above the shoulder, in the face, is not is uh, not okay in this league. Well, this man down unit has been sensational, but this is asking a lot of them. They've been on the field a lot in the second half. Gary Martinello up top to Gary Gate. That's Ron Martinello. We've got two brother combinations out here. Gary takes a hard shot. Save. Tucker tries to get it. Can't come up with it. That could be deadly. Checking violation. They checked the stick while he was in the crease. You get a little bit of a provision of safety while you're inside that crease area around the goal. So now it'll be Philadelphia's ball. With 5.38 left and two goals down, Bill, you kind of wish you could look on the sideline and see Brad Potts there for you. You know, you're right, Leaf, but at the same time, you know who won that game in uh, that 11-10 game against New England Blazers early on in the season was Todd Curry. So that's a guy that could score for you as well. Curry has the ball right now. Gets it all the way out to McGeady. They're trying to burn up the penalty, and they've got a little bit more left on it. Uh, 1-11, so they've got to do some running. McGeady takes three shots and dribbles it into the goal. That's not what he wanted to do. He couldn't find any help. He runs off. Fresh legs come on. DeSico will be the player. Detroit taking their time now. Ricky Freed playing against Ronnie Martinell. This is Terry. 54 left on the penalty. 4.55 in the game. Terry down to Paul Gate. Terry Martinell. We got to keep the Martinell of the gate straight for you. Actually, that's Gary down low now. Paul usually plays that low position. That's Gary. They've switched him. This is Paul up top. He'll trigger it. That'll be Ronnie right there. Takes a hard shot. Ronnie Martinello may put the clincher in. 14 to 11, a three goal lead for the Turbos with 437 left. When you travel, stay where the stars of the major indoor lacrosse league stay. In Worcester, Mass, the Clarion Suites. In New York, the Long Island Marriott. In Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Airport Hilton Inn. In Baltimore, the Sheraton Inner Harbor Hotel. In Pittsburgh, the Weston William Penn. And in Detroit, the Radisson Pontchartrain. All official hotels of the major indoor lacrosse league. Time, 10 minutes, 23 seconds. Replay of the goal by Ron Martinello. I tell you, Ronnie's come in there, and they, they keep letting him come in close, and he's got one of the hardest shots in the league. Not the fastest guy in the team, but boy, when you give him a chance to shoot and set up, he can put it in. Both the Martinello boys, sensational shooters. 14 to 11, a three goal lead for the Turbos. And now Philadelphia's really forced to make something happen. They've got to find an offensive threat. Elliot picks up the ball. He has been sensational and right what right now would be a losing call but Dallas Elliott has been really at the top of this game. Well you know who's been silent for a while Leaf is uh, John Tucker. We haven't seen him out there and I wonder if after that fight his shoulder's been bothering him. Well, I'll tell you what they weren't sure he'd even play. He's got a lot of guts even being out there. Todd Curry not a great scorer in track. He's more of an outside man. He'll get by one guy in the field game. He's picked it up the field or the uh, box traffic kind of scoring. He's a sensational athlete. And here's where he's dangerous up top. Big goal save by Ted Sawicki. We got a delayed call, looks like. No, it's uh, Elliot coming over. He's probably down, as you said, seven, eight pounds. He's over the sideline. Dallas Elliot is right now begging for water. He is very thirsty. Just to the right of your screen down there. And we've got, is that Doddridge again? That's yeah. Neil Doddridge, yeah. Doddridge. I tell you, he takes a lot of pride in being the most penalized player in the league. Well, com coming into tonight's game, he had 19 minutes, and, and that was, again, only uh, number one to Ron Martinello, who was number two in the league in penalty minutes, and uh, I'm sure Neil is going to surpass everybody by the end of the season. The scores are getting closer. These teams play the turbos. That kind of penalty minutes can really end up killing you. Right now, for instance, with a three-goal lead, you feel
up pretty good, but it filled off the scores here. That penalty doesn't look too smart. Nice save by Sawicki. It was Delegati coming in, getting the feed, and Sawicki takes his time. Jeff Goldberg here. And Philadelphia did a nice job on that extra man. I mean, moving the ball inside, being patient. They got a great shot, but I think it was just an excellent save by Ted Sawicki. Gabriel is out here. They're going to burn up some of his time. Gary Martin trying to take it away. Double team coming. Mark Hahn trying to get in there. He's got good wheels. Checks it away. Oh, and John Tucker tried to flip it up to Gary Martin. You know, this is when teams get in trouble against the Turbos. When they try to go against Paul and Gary, and they, they overextend themselves. When they do that, that's when Gary and Paul beat them, and here you go again. Well, they got the ball last time. They just didn't pick it up. John Tucker tried that slap check to get it out front. Gary Gate just playing with the defense of Philadelphia. And a tackle by Lou Delegati. Literally tacking him about the five-yard line. It's not, it's not impossible, Leaf, but uh, Philadelphia does have to get the ball back quickly to, to get back in this game. And don't forget, this is a power play situation right here. 41 seconds left on it. They can't they can get possession. Paul Gate may score. It is close. He's tough. Beats two players. Tries to get it to Terry Martinello. Philadelphia playing tough D. Watch out. Hard shot. And here goes Mark Hahn. He's got great wheels. He is He's fast. Speed. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Here comes a shot. He bounces in. And what a defensive save. That defensive player from behind. Brian Lemon. Lemon really let it all go and barely caught him at the end. Couldn't have been better. Well, luckily it was Brian Lemon because, uh, again, he's one of the faster members of the Turbos. You've seen him for many years, Bill. He's been on the uh, indoor league for a while. There's a hard shot by Gary Martin. And with 135 left, it's not impossible. They only need two to tie, and that's what they'll be looking for. Faceoffs becoming very critical. Timeout called by Philadelphia, but a big score by Gary Martin brings the wings back to within two. Timeout called by Dave Evans. Sensational play, and Martin is absolutely exhausted. Well, we see the we see the goal down here. He he was tired, but I tell you, he didn't take off anything on this shot. And uh, he moved Teddy from one side to the next. And I tell you, out of the 17,000 fans here, nobody is leaving. Hard shot there, it just pings the corner. 135 left, they just need two. Of course, the faceoff, as I mentioned, very critical. Chris Flynn, the specialist, out on the field right now, keeping loose, keeping warm. Is he intense? Here's a good look at Gary Mark, second goal of the night. Tremendous player. They've spread the offensive load out pretty evenly on the Philadelphia team. Well, you know what's funny, Leaf, is I'm looking, uh, Jacques Monty is going out to take the faceoff, and I thought maybe it'd be Gary Gate in this case, but... There's our next week's game. It's the Blazers at the Pittsburgh Bulls. They'll be in Pittsburgh, and that's our Prime Network game of the week as we continue our exclusive coverage on Prime Network. All the way down to the championship game. Philadelphia wants to be in there. They want to try for that three-peat. They've got to win their division first. This win would be very critical if they're going to follow that route. Chris Flynn in the gray. Monty Purple. Flynn comes up big. Now the ball goes to Resch. Crowd on their feet. 27 left, and they need two. Tucker takes it. He'll quarterback the offense. Well, Philadelphia pulled the goalie, Leaf, so uh, they've got that extra attacker out there right now on the floor. Conley looks like he heard the shot a little bit, Bill. He came down. I don't know if he knew that they had a man in transition. I don't think so, but again, let's look to John Tucker to make something happen here. It'll be six on five. They pulled the goalie. Nobody's in the goal. Tucker right in the belly, so Wicky can score if he launches it down. Goldberg elects to take his time. Nobody in the goal. Well, you know, what's interesting is this shows a sign of maturity by a team. There was no goalie in there. They're taking their time. They're not going to throw it away. A minute left. Timeout now called by Vito Martinello. He's got the ball. He's got a two-goal lead. All he has to do is be smart. His players hold the ball. He's got himself with number five. Good look at the bench. Tetsuwiki feeling a little confident now. A team with a two-goal lead. Yeah, they're on their side. Well, they're confident. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure we're going to see Gary and Paul out on the floor. There's no question about it. It's so impossible to take the ball from those two guys. You, even with a double team, there's no guarantee that you'll get it. Mito Martinello barking out signals. He's uh, got players all around him trying to figure out who are the players he wants to match up. So, Leaf, you talked about Teddy Sawicki and how he'd play. What do you think? How he'd play this whole game? You're asking me how Teddy Swicky played? Yeah. Yeah, a sensational player. I mean, first team all pro. He had that lull in the second quarter where he had a little bit, he was a little bit off 
was hard to really see what his problem was, but he came right back and gave it a great second half. Well, you know, he gave up a lot of goals last week against New York, but shots on goal. He saw that stat. A lot of shots in this game. And now, the challenge to Philadelphia. Well, that's all pro John Tucker trying to take the ball from a, I think, a next all pro, uh, Paul Gate. Sawicki and Eliud going the full way, going all the way. Four quarters, 33 seconds left. You see the clock right there. That's in the game. And two goals needed for Philadelphia. They call their last timeout. Evans gets his players to the sideline. There's the bench of Philadelphia. They've got to get one quick, get the face off, and then score one to tie. So again, we talk about Sawicki playing a, a really great game in the goal. He had that little bit of a lull. And of course, Eliuk started off pretty slow in the first quarter. They traded quarters of, uh, of being a little bit on the cold side, but they overall have been very, very hot. A lot of offense applied by both teams. Right. Very active day for these goalies. It wasn't like easy shots. It, it, both goalies played well, and they both deserve to uh, be an MVP of this game, I'll tell you. They both played well. It'll be it'll be interesting to see right now. I would imagine that Dave Evans is calling a play for a quick pick off the crease. This is my guess. And a guy taking the pass close on and shooting right away because they've got to take a shot right away. There's a good look at Eliuk. He's had a sensational day from Vancouver, British Columbia. Now he's out of the game. They pulled him at six on five. All the stops now. Dave Evans using all his arsenal. He'll have six offensive players, nobody in the goal. Curry brings it up. Clock counting down. That's the game clock. Curry has the ball. Took his eye off and lost possession. This will be it. Ball kicked out and Rodriguez will slam dunk this one home. He's got Goldberg out in front. He wheels around. Nobody in the goal. Takes his time. One fake and a great save by Ricky Free. Doesn't really matter because they need two goals to tie. Ball comes down. Tucker will not even get a shot off. Feeds the crease. Back into player with not enough as Paul Denikin was the last one and that'll do it 14 to 12 the turbos really held on when Philadelphia put intense pressure on them they score the last three goals of the game and they win a very tough game 14 to 12 And what a game it was from the spectrum in Philadelphia. Everything we thought it would be the Philadelphia Wings two-time defending champions holding off for as long as they could, but there was the Detroit Turbos with that awesome offense led by the Gate brothers. And of course, three records were up for grabs. Three records fell. Gary Gate got the most assist record. He took that one. He also took the Coors Light Player of the Game Award. Three goals, three assists with action like this. Six points on the night. Gary Gate, most times unstoppable. Let's take a look at this outlet pass from Ted Sawicki. And then it's a fast break with Gary Gate breathing down the neck of Dallas Eliuk. One fake, puts it in. He had three goals for the night. That was one of them. And our Bill Barroza is down with the Coors Light MVP, Gary Gate, right now. Hey, Gary, congratulations on a terrific win. Uh, close game, it was 7-5 at halftime. And, I mean, did you ever worry that you weren't going to win tonight? Oh, we certainly knew there was a tough team, uh, especially in Philadelphia. You know, they're a great team, and they got great fans here that really backed them up and supported them. And obviously, uh, they haven't lost here at home until the night, so it, we definitely knew that uh, it was going to be a tough game and a close one. Well, between you and Paul, you broke a lot of records tonight. You had three and three. You broke the uh, assist record. Uh, a fantastic achievement. W one thing I saw is uh, Paul got in a fight, and you ran to his side. Uh, you were the first one down there. What were you thinking about? Oh, well, any time uh, one of your own players gets in a fight, you always got to be there to back him up. You, you know, you never let one of your own players get hurt. And, uh, you know, as people saw, Paul did uh, pretty well and did a good job out there, and there was no need for me to come in. Well, let me ask you, after last week's upset win by the New York Saints, I mean, were you guys thinking that, geez, we could come into the spectrum and maybe not play as well as we're capable of? Uh, we know we can play well when we put our minds into it, and uh, I don't think we played as well as we can tonight. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of work to do, and we got, you know, a few games coming up, and, you know, hopefully we'll get that first place and, and get in that final game, and that's what we're striving for. And we realized that we didn't play great tonight, but a win's a win. Yeah, well, let me let me ask you this. Did the fans make a difference in, in keeping the game close for a while? Uh, personally, I, I enjoy the fans when they get on your back. It just gives you a little more uh, to get up and get after them and, you know, try and quiet them down. Uh, you know, it adds a lot of excitement to the game. 
Well, Gary Gate, uh, Coors Light MVP for the 14 to uh, 12 victory over the uh, Philadelphia Wings today at the Spectrum. And let me send it back up to Leif Elsmo. Thank you very much, Bill Barroza. Here are those records we talked about. All of them were broken. It was Paul Gate overcoming Brad Cotts for most goals. It was Paul and Gary both overtaking Brad Cotts for total points. And Gary overcame John Tucker for most assists. It was a sensational game with the best of this year against the best of last year. We'll be back with our final comments from the spectrum. When traveling in the Philadelphia area, stay with the stars of the major indoor lacrosse league stay, the Philadelphia Airport Hilton, the official headquarters of the Philadelphia Wings. It was a great game. Everything you would expect from two champion teams, Detroit Turbos, the expected champion this year, one of the contenders for sure, the Philadelphia Wings, two-time defending champs, a 14-12 win for Detroit, but it was close all the way through. Let's take a look at the standings after this game. Detroit 5-1, a three-goal lead in the win column over Pittsburgh. We'll see Pittsburgh play New England next week in our game of the week, a must-win for both teams. Baltimore now with a one-game lead over Philadelphia in the win column. Philadelphia still in it as this league progresses on through the season. That American division, very, very tough, Bill Barroza, and Philadelphia is still in it. They've proven tonight that they can play with anybody, injuries or not. You're right. Uh, every, every team in the American division has a chance to win that, to make it to the championship game. Uh, so we'll look for anybody in that league. This game, particular tonight, a very close game, 14 to 12. Brad Cotts, one of the best players ever to play the game of lacrosse and certainly a key to the Philadelphia team. He averages more than three points a game, a 14 to 2, a 14 to 12 score. You would like to see him in this game, and it might have been a different ending. I think Brad Cotts, uh, not having him on the team this evening from his injury, uh, was a difference, but uh, the person that made it a close game was Dallas Elliott in goal. Did a fantastic job. Let's take a look at now what the league has been doing to Detroit. They start off with huge margins of victory. They have been shrinking. They lost last week to New York. A close game here to Philadelphia, a team that they shellacked earlier on the season. Is the league learning something about the Gate brothers and this great offense? I think they are. I think uh, Gary and Paul are absolutely fantastic players in the league, but uh, you don't have to match up one-on-one -on -one with them every game. If you just play the guys that are on the floor, and that's what teams are doing now, and they'll get their goals, but again, you don't want to give up the goals to the other uh, three guys that are on the floor with them. And Philadelphia proved that they can play hurt, and they will be a factor as we move on toward the championship game this year. For Bill Barroza, I'm Lee Feldman. Well, thank you for joining us. Let's take a look at the final score one more time. It's Detroit 14, Philadelphia Wings 12. Be sure you continue with us next week as we follow our Prime Network it's exclusive coverage of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. It'll be the New England Blazers visiting the Pittsburgh Bulls and a must win for each team. Join us next week for the Major Indoor Lacrosse League.